Hello and welcome. Another edition of the Coach's Corner, where each and every Thursday, Coach Serrano and myself spend some time, college coaches from around the country, all levels, all divisions. This week, again, Coach Serrano is away uh, visiting family out on the West Coast, and so I'm going to carry the ball. want to encourage people that find their way to not only hear on the YouTube channel, but also via the podcast go ahead and subscribe. You know, 2024, we're going to have a lot more content. So stay up to date. We're going to have Tyler, uh, my youngest son, join us when we talk youth baseball and some training tips. We're going to have strength and conditioning uh, directors and teachers talk us talk to us a little bit about strength and, and conditioning. And we're going to talk to college coaches such as our guest today, Anthony DeLeo, about things necessarily like pitching and hitting and fielding and catching. But we're going to do that on different segments over and above our Thursday night. So as I alluded to here, today our guest is from the American East Conference, NCAA Division I, New Jersey Tech. Anthony DeLeo is a recruiting coordinator slash assistant coach slash a head of pitchers and catchers. Anthony is also a central mass guy, which is near and dear to our hearts within the Beatty family. Anthony, thank you for joining us today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course. And we're going to dive right in. And, you know, when I, I think it was Alex Trezza that might have been uh, at New York, uh, New Jersey Tech a while back. And I remember asking him specifically about the college. And you just alluded to it before we came on here. When you say New Jersey Tech, you're talking about a strong academic school that in some cases can compete with Ivies and Patriot Leagues and Nescat schools up here in the Northeast. So let's talk a little bit about New Jersey Tech. A, what led you down there to coach? And B, tell us a little bit about the school and the campus that makes it so special. Yeah, Tech has been a, a big change for me. It's been now six years being down here uh, after spending one year back up in Mass at Merrimack when we were still 90-10. Um, we're lucky to win any 10 that year and then pull the, for the assistant job down here when Robbie McClellan took over as head coach. Um, prior to that, it's been a couple years in pro ball with the Dodgers and Blue Jays orgs, um, to kind of give me the background that led me to this position. So, um, since I got down here, it's been a, a real change of pace. I think New Jersey tech is, is something that I didn't really totally understand coming into it. You know, I took this job kind of as a as a foot in the door kind of thing. Robbie was very upfront as he was the interim tagged head coach at that point and said, Hey man, we're going to not pay you a lot of money. You're going to come in, work a lot of hours and we might not have jobs in nine months, but um, you know, ever since we've been working together and it's, it's been very fruitful. We've been lucky to really build this program a little bit more and with, with help from some incredible players, leaders that we've had, it's, it's turned into a, a place that guys want to be now and on the recruiting front it's it's such an important piece to find you know an academic fit when you're in the process and being at an academic school like this where we're giving out ivy league level degrees um especially when it comes to stem fields and the business field um it's a it's a huge change of pace it's not what i was used to um it's not, to be completely honest it's not what my background was um as a state school guy um, but it is, it's really special because you, you encounter some incredible human beings, you know, in the mix of work and then the young men that we're coaching, um, guys that are not only really good baseball players, but that are going to change the world, you know, once they leave here. So, um, you know, wall street journal just had this as the second best public school in the world, which was a huge honor for us. Wow. You know, 19th wow. overall second, second public school. So, um, when it comes to value, we're legitimately number one in the world in return on investment. And it helps us get guys that a lot of people from the outside might think we shouldn't get. So it's helped build this culture, this program, and and led us into a little bit more winning tradition. You know, one of the, you know, the dynamics of recruiting is when you start to talk about especially Division One baseball, and you and I kind of being in that realm you as a player, me as a coach with regard to division three, walk us through that fresh first practice in the, in the fall for freshmen and how big of a jump, you know, we've talked about, it's the biggest jump. A lot of coaches talk about that, but you know, people think power four, 
Power Five, New Jersey Tech. Well, Division One, as you alluded to, you guys are opening up this year in Core Gables. There's just a lot of dudes all up and down Division One, and you have to be ready to play when your feet hit campus. Should they not? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest change that high school players and families need to realize is that this is not the same game that you're used to. The, <laughs> the the speed of the game is is the single biggest adjustment I think when you get to to the Division One level, depending regardless of where you end up. Um, you know, I've I've been to a regional at all three levels of NCAA baseball and seeing that gradual climb anywhere you're at, you're going to get a guy or two that could play at the top level. Division three right. guys, division two players, doesn't matter. Junior college everywhere. There's really good players. But when you get here, every guy that's on your roster and every guy you're going to face was also the best player on his high school team, the best player on his travel team. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys that have had incredible high school travel careers get on campus and, realize very fast that this is not going to be a walk in the park to a starting role. Um, you know, a lot of freshmen when, when they get on campus, just quite frankly, aren't ready to go um, mentally or physically. I think that's a, it's a big change is that you're not just showing up to the park, letting yourself kind of rely on the talent that, you know, you've had for these years, penciled in the three hole, you go hit, you, you pitch, you do whatever. Um, now you're competing with guys and, and what our job is, is to literally find somebody better next year. So um, it's going to be a four-year grind for you. And, you know, you're never going to have given playing time. Um, I think a coach that promises you playing time is probably not somebody you want to play for, to be completely honest. Right. Um, you got to come in and earn it. And it's something that when guys are playing as freshmen, you know that they're really advanced. And most of the time that comes down to mental maturity as much as physical. Um, I think we wouldn't be recruiting you unless you were physically talented enough to help us. But the mental side of the game is what the big change is and understanding how to how to manage your time, how to manage your thoughts. Um, it's a real difference maker for young guys. You know, I want you to expand on that a little bit about the mental maturation piece. And what I find when I'm working with families is trying to get them to understand the faster that you understand your role within a team, within a program, and the responsibility of that role, the better you're going to be mentally because you're showing up every day prepared. Can you just talk about that mental preparation? Uh, because I think it catches a lot of student athletes off guard. Yeah, I think you got to come in with an open mind, but you've also got to you've got to really earn trust of the old guys right away. Right. And I think being a, a really good teammate, and I know this is kind of a overused buzzword at this point, but the culture of a program is what can carry young guys to success. And and it really does matter if you've got older guys, captains, leaders that you can kind of lean on and, and kind of use them to share their expertise. And hopefully, hopefully you're good enough that you're pushing for their role. And there's some kind of mutual respect built that, um, you know, allows you to kind of to flourish and to become close with some of those guys. I think I know I wouldn't have got through it as a player if I didn't have older guys that that held me accountable, but also, you know, kind of pushed me to get better. And I think you're you start to see some programs and some places around the country, friends, coaches, everything that maybe culture isn't the strongest thing. Or you see guys that are really playing for themselves and and going in thinking like I need to have success because I need to try to get in the transfer portal. I need to go try to get NIL money, whatever it is, where the end goal really has to be team success. And it's it's crazy how much if you buy into that, that generally your personal success is going to follow. It is not a coincidence that the best teams usually have some of the best players. Like It's just how it works. And I'm sure there's outliers to, to what I'm talking about, but to compete at the, at the mid-major level and for us in the America East, you don't win unless you have cohesiveness as a team. And I know in our regional run two years ago, to be completely honest with you, we were not the most talented team in the conference, uh, but we were the toughest and, and we got hot at the right time. And that's all it took. And baseball's a weird game, how, how it can kind of reward you for doing stuff right over the course of time. And, um, you know, it pays off. So young guys that get on campus – don't come in and think that you are going to be given anything. 
because it is couldn't be further from that. You know, you got to come in, earn it, and you probably got three or four guys at your position that you're competing with on a daily basis. So mentally being prepared to not only maybe not be the best one in that group, but to know how to persevere through and keep just sticking to tedious work rather than quitting or starting to question yourself. And um, it, it's a hard thing for a lot of guys because you're it's your first time away from home. Um, it's probably harder. I know for our guys, harder academically than they've ever been challenged before a much bigger time commitment from an academic side, from a baseball side, for, uh, for study hall, for uh, weight training, conditioning, all of this stuff piles up. And if you're not mentally prepared or, or tough enough, we'll say, to handle it, um, you know, there are resources there for you, but you've got to be really upfront, honest, and communicate at a really high level just to make it through your first semester a lot of the time. You know, one of the topics that's near and dear to both of our hearts, and I really want to take a deep dive down this kind of this rabbit hole, is pitching. You know, pitching from the perspective of guys out on the bump, but also guys that are in the, the rectangle trying to hit it. Pitching at the college level is about persistency, meaning you got to pound a strike zone. you got to make hitters make decisions. Conversely, as a hitter, you have to be prepared these guys typically at the level that you play and participate at, they can pound his own in all four quadrants, but they have these absolutely filthy sliders and they can decelerate. We focus so much on velocity and spin rates that we, we fail to prepare from a pitching perspective about location and also about being unpredictable, not inconsistent, but unpredictable, being able to decelerate when people are expecting acceleration. Can you talk a little bit about that as a coach with regard to the pitchers coming in as well as the hitters trying to hit these nasty guys with on the bump? Yeah, I think it's something that, that we put a ton of emphasis on. It's, it's really hard because I think generally speaking, you are going out, you are recruiting guys that are, that are in a certain velocity range, what you're looking for. Um, maybe even metrically, if you have the ability to measure, you know, how their fastball spinning, what their breaking ball metrics look like. Um, we wouldn't be recruiting guys that can't help us from a physical talent standpoint. But when you get here, I think the biggest challenge and kind of meshing it with the last question here is that this is not just come spray, you know, 88 to 92 and think you're going to have success. Like that's hit speed here, man. And, and you show up and you get banged around. If you're not locating where you need to, um, you learn the hard way really quick. So, um, you know, something that we do and we emphasize the staff a ton is, is being just relentless in and around the strike zone and, and knowing what makes you really successful as a pitcher and really embracing that. Um, because we've got 15 arms on the roster this year and, and every one of them is pretty unique to each other. So, individually understanding what what makes you good what makes you successful as a pitcher what gets you outs um and embracing that rather than trying to to maybe change the guy that you are when you're out there because more or less we are going to take a ton of time we're going to put bullpens pitch design sessions we're going to watch a video we're going to do classroom sessions all of this great stuff but when you're out there in the circle you can't change who you are man and you got to just learn how to really compete at the highest level and, and truly believe in yourself. Again, it kind of goes back to the mental game, but some of the guys that have the quietest minds, it, it, the nicest way of saying it, are the ones that are the best. Right. You know, it's not a coincidence that sometimes guys, and I'm sure we've all coached or been around players that had a hard time getting through school or, or didn't maybe necessarily have the um, – the highest uh, ceiling of a future away from baseball. But sometimes they're the best guys when they're out there because they just know how to compete. They know what their task at hand is. So it's it's the balance that, that – and the hardest thing that I honestly deal with as a coach on a daily basis is, is working with these really academic, analytical thinkers because now in this age of baseball, it's it's taken over. And it's something that we have to embrace but also learn to balance with, I'm going to say, old school compete – an old school feel where you can't just be one or the other. You can need to really excel at both. Um, so shutting guys' brains off is sometimes, or at least uh, controlling what those positive thoughts are, is a really important aspect. And getting guys to believe 
and show them with the analytical side, with the technology that we have. You know, we have your trackman metrics from every bullpen or live session that we throw. Um, using that in some of your pitch design sessions and some, to understand what you are, but not to use that as an analytical tool when we're actually out there competing. Because all we, I really want you focusing on is executing one pitch at a time. And you need to beat the guy that's across from you. So it's great. It's awesome to have all this technology. We're very lucky to have it, um, you know, better than almost everybody that we compete with. But that doesn't help you when you're, you know, February 16th across from a Miami lineup. Like when you're out there in Coral Gables and there's 10,000 people yelling at you, it doesn't matter how you spin your breaking ball, man. Like right. if you're thinking about that, we've already lost. So. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, one look at your roster, really unique, as you uh, said to me earlier, 17 states as well as Canada. If you would have said to me, you know, and I did a little homework, I'll, I'll admit to that. Uh, but when you t start talking about California, uh, Florida, Vermont, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, I mean, a lot of students are finding their way to New Jersey Tech. And so when I'm talking to parents about broadening, you know, their, their recruiting, uh, you know, their schools, I always say, let's trade the athletic ability for academic excellence. When you start to go out and recruit over and above the physical, you know, tools, what are some of the, you know, some of the other ancillary uh, kind of uh, habits or tools that jump out at you, whether they're mental, whether they're instincts, things of that nature that really you find make a great student athlete fit wise at New Jersey Tech. Yeah, it's been a, a big change here in the six years that I've been here now. Um, when we came in, roster was more or less built around this tri-state area. You know, it was mostly Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania guys. Um, and over the course of that time, you know, with the success comes a lot more interest, which is a good thing for us. Um, you know, playing on Friday night, first game of the regional at Arkansas with the number one team in the country, it got us in front of a lot of people. And right. beating, you know, beating Northeastern the next day and getting our first regional win in school history was even another step, you know, because we, we start getting some national recognition and, and people start reaching out that you haven't heard from before, you know, and I think, I think it's, we're in kind of a, a unique spot because top down we're, we're spread out a ton. So our head coach, Robbie, is, is from Kansas originally. Um, I'm from Massachusetts. Our other assistant, Matt, is from Alaska. And our wow. other and our third assistant is, is a local guy from this area. Um, so we truly do all have much different backgrounds in baseball. We've all been through every different level from junior college to the major league level. Um, and kind of leaning on contacts is a really important thing for us. There's, you've only, every coach has probably got a, you know, maybe a dozen really trusted contacts around the country that they really know that they can call and they'll shoot you straight. And, and leaning on guys like that and forming those relationships is kind of what's expanded our roster across the country. Um, you mentioned it, 17 states in Canada represented with our current roster and our committed guys next year. So, um, it has been a, a, a real grind in the summertime, um, you know, seeing seeing different events around the country, but leaning on those guys that you really know and trust. Um, and, and it's great that, you know, we can keep those contacts because they keep sending us good players. And and it's it's an interesting fit because we can't just go to a camp or to a, a tournament down in Georgia and say, like, hey, I want that guy, that guy and that guy it's not how it works. You got to be really realistic and know what your niche is because not only is maybe the logo not as sexy as others, you're looking for academic kids that I can usually cross off half of a roster right when I look at it. Right. So not only do they need to fit on the baseball field, really like how they play, but, but you've got to have a GPA and test scores that are getting us into the conversation. Tell it, tell it, give us the criteria there. Give us kind of the, uh, the floor as far as with regard to GPA and test scores. Sure. So um, we're kind of working with a, a, a moving scale every year because we're a, a state school in New Jersey. So the matrix does change yearly um, very slightly, but we're, 
back prior to COVID, it was much simpler. We could say, hey, you need a, a 3.8 and a 1300. Um, now it's changed a little bit more because the matrix skews a little bit more towards need-based uh, aid money. So you're probably looking at mid 1200s ish SAT score three seven or better um, to to get your foot in the door, um, and then academic money usually will come, especially for out of state kids that are closer to thirteen fourteen hundred SAT. Um, most of the time, like I mentioned, we're, we're on the similar guys to the Ivy Leagues when it comes to academics. But honestly, the people we match up with the most are your Georgia Tech, Georgetown, Duke, uh, Northwestern, that kind of group of national-based schools that are also very academic. So um, it's, a, it's a unique structure that we deal with, um, especially because we are so spread out and we're in a Northeast Conference now, being in the America East. Um, it's a little bit different, you know, because we, we can't pursue junior college players, which is a, a big thing in college baseball. Um, See, now that's a big thing for parents because they are under the impression that every school deals with JUCO. So I, wanna, I want you to kind of expand on that, why you cannot work with JUCO. But I also want you to touch on every parent that I talk to now seems to want to throw out test optional, test optional. Every school is test optional. Where, where do you work? With if the, a student athlete doesn't have a test score or doesn't want to share their test score, how does that affect potential recruiting uh, at New Jersey Tech? Yeah, so we as we speak, be since COVID for this three year period, we were test optional. Um, the assumption is that going into the twenty four class that we are now requiring it again. So it depends on where you're at. Some schools are still going to probably stay test optional forever. But I think more academic institutions are generally going to sway towards going back to some standardized. Exactly. Um, now, I mentioned no junior college guys. That also kind of encompasses, uh, you know, a newer problem or opportunity for us. Um, that is the transfer portal. Um, we also are very limited in the transfer portal. We are not really able to to explore it too much, to be completely honest. The only guys that we really can bring in. Um, would be a grad transfer. Right. Who has finished four years generally at another really academic institution. Some Division three guys that are playing above their level from academic schools. Um, yes, or on yes. a, and the only other occasion would be a freshman from a really academic school who had like a 4.0 that has stuff that they can transfer in. We've had, uh, it's not something that we explore very much either. We are a program that's very drastically built on on development of our guys and not building through the transfer portal. Um, we each year we're going to bring in one or two grad transfers generally, just to be kind of stop gaps for positions that we think we're really young at to protect some young guys. To be completely honest, not necessarily to always play right away or to play huge innings or play a huge role. It'd be great if they can come in and do that, but more so it's to protect our young guys. And I think that. Freshmen maybe don't understand that all the time, but sometimes a freshman is better off getting, you know, 30 to 50 at bats in, in the correct moments where we think it's best for their development rather than running them out there for 100 where they could hit 200 and, and, and really not have a very productive year. Um, but like I said, very limited transfer portal usage. Part of that also goes back to that we, we don't lose guys to the portal, which is something that we're really proud of, to be completely honest. Over four years, we've lost three players to the transfer portal, and two of them were money issues. So, um, you know, guys, student athletes that are playing for us feel like it's a really good spot to, to not only finish your incredible degree, but to get better and to develop as a baseball player. And, and it, it, it means a lot to us because I think that's a lot, of, a lot of the mutual trust that we try to build with players from day one. And it's shown when, when they want to stick around and stick to the process that we've kind of built for them. You know, I, I want to, this, this final question, I've asked it in a myriad of different ways, but I think you and I being kind of cut from the same cloth as far as being from the area of the country that we are from, the word development is a lot different to us as opposed to the West Coast or the South where they get a thousand outdoor repetitions. Do you, as a college coach, 
feel that the developmental model of college baseball, i.e. the freshmen and sophomores, do you think that they're, we're losing that battle or do you think we'll come back where student athletes will recognize that that's an important part of not only from being a student athlete, but in life, working hard to develop, to become the best that you're capable of becoming? Yeah, I think that that's something that kind of gets brushed over in this, in the transfer portal age, we'll call it, where you're seeing it every day in, in college football and basketball that guys are jumping around like crazy. And and I don't want to speak to those sports because I know it's much different than what we deal with. But personally, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. Nowadays, there's an excuse that's built into the development for a lot of guys, we'll say, where hey, I didn't play a lot. I didn't get good enough in a short period of time. I'm going to go somewhere else. Where the best players and the best teams that that we're trying to build are guys that want to battle through that and are wanting to stick to that process. And and obviously you're coming to us because of an academic reason as, as one of your main goals. But not even that. It's it's more the the aspect that guys have the ability to have an out. And, and don't get me wrong, I do think the transfer portal in certain scenarios is, and, and in theory, it, it's a really good idea. You know, guys that are in bad situations, that have a coach leave, something of that sort. But it, it's been maximized, you know, a hundred times X. And and now it is unfortunately turning into something that's so cutthroat and, and that's taking jobs away from guys that there's a lot of programs that just flat out aren't recruiting high school guys anymore. Oh yeah. You know, and, and you're, and I, I do understand it. You know, I see the argument when you're trying to win and, and yes, we're, we're trying to mold, you know, young men into future leaders, but our job, you know, by the, the contract is to win baseball games. So would you rather have a 21, 22 year old guy that's had 400 at bats in his career come in or a freshman who's a, you know, like we talked about, maybe not even ready for the level. So I get it. I do understand. We we kind of take it as a blessing that we don't have to deal with that. It's something that we don't have to make that decision because we don't have the opportunity to. So we are forced to um, to really lock it in and to commit to our young players. Um, something else that's kind of obscure, I think, is that when we're when we're talking scholarship money with a player. Um, it's a really hard balance. Most people and families don't understand that this is a puzzle for us. This is not football and basketball where it's full, fully funded, full scholarships for 85 guys. You're talking about 11.7 full scholarships over 40 players in the best of scenarios. And most programs in the Northeast and most mid-major programs are dealing with much less than that 11.7. It's different school to school. So you were talking about a a puzzle pieces that you're trying to fit in that you can make it as affordable as possible for the best players possible. Um, while trying to, to help out families that need it a little bit more to make it affordable. So you know that they can, they can commit to staying in school for four years. Um, it, it's really hard. And, and when you get here, it doesn't matter what money you're on. You know, we, it, we don't go over the roster limit. We can only recruit right to it because of our academic structure. So Generally speaking, and as we speak, the NCAA limits 40 players. Um, we're only at 35 this fall. So we found 35 that we really like and we committed to those guys. But something that I was alluding to here is that parents and players need to be a little bit more informed in the process because when you're in the high school level and you're getting Amen. when you're getting recruited by these schools, ask questions and see if they're being honest. Look up data. You can look up APR statistics. That's that's public knowledge. You know, um, it's something that's really important. You can look up team GPAs for for schools that post it, which is most. Um, you can find retention rate stuff. How many guys are in the transfer portal? Um, how many guys are they getting out of the transfer portal? These are important things that players need to be aware of. But also, the when if you're lucky enough to get a scholarship offer from from a Division One program. By the letter of the law, that is a year-to-year -year contract. That is not a four-year commitment at most institutions. Um, 
And I think something that's really helped us get some players that, again, people think maybe we shouldn't, is that we commit to guys for four years. So when you commit to us, we commit to you. And it's something that has earned a lot of trust in our players. And I do think that it's part of why guys aren't so eager to leave. It's they're bought into the culture, they're bought into the program and their development plans. And, and they know that, Hey, even if I have a, a bad freshman year, I underperform a little or physically I'm not quite ready or even more common. I get hurt. That happens. We're not going to pull that from you. And I think that that is a, an important factor that lets guys trust in their ability and actually just lean on us for guidance while, while their development is coming and they don't press unnecessarily because if, if you're on a one year contract, just like in pro baseball, if you're on a one year deal, you are fighting to get back from that injury probably a little bit sooner than you should, or you are pressing when you're in the box and you're struggling or you're on the mound, everything matters and not necessarily in a good way. I think that guys press and do unnecessary things to get back from injury or to get back to performance levels because they know that their scholarship is gone if they don't. And while I do think that urgency is is something to to be respected, um, I think it brings the best out in guys when when you show them that you care, but you also show them that we're committed. Well, I think that last two minutes of your commitment level to your student athletes speaks volumes. That should be the loudest uh, comment that we heard uh, tonight. And I think it's really, really important for parents to hear two way street commitment, the, you know, development. These are words we, we throw around, but they don't really have a lot of meaning sometimes, but when it comes to New Jersey tech and obviously coach DeLeo, it, it, it's it's a meaningful statement. So, Anthony, I want to say thank you because I know this is the busy time of year. We're getting ready for the you know semester break. We're about to roll into the ABCA, and then obviously it's college baseball season. But I want to say thank you very, very much for not only shedding light on New Jersey Tech, but a lot of your philosophies and thoughts as a staff. If there's anything that either Dave or I can do for you and, and New Jersey Tech, we're, we're definitely happy to do so always representing Central Mass with class. I appreciate your time and uh, happy holidays. And I look forward to uh, catching up with you in the spring. Thanks, Walter. Have a great holiday. Appreciate you. You're time. very welcome. And I want to let all parents know, you know, make sure that you're following going into 2024. We're going to have a lot of baseball blue book, blue book bullet points where we're going to be doing some teaching. We're going to have some coaches offering some thoughts things on pitching, hitting, fielding, catching, all of those things that you want for your 6 to 21-year-old to learn. We're going to be providing those during the course of each and every week in 2024. Thank you very much. And we